welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today we have James Wilson with us. Welcome, James. Thanks, Natasha. With the backdrop of stubbornly high inflation persisting in major economies, together with the ongoing Russia-Ukraine crisis, how have the markets been performing this quarter? You have probably seen on the news that investment markets have had another tough quarter. Global share markets have fallen over 4%, bringing major indices back into bear market territory. And bonds, which should be expected to provide some cushioning when share markets fall, continue to post negative returns due to rising interest rates. The New Zealand dollar continued to depreciate, particularly against the US dollar. However, the New Zealand share market, which has a more defensive composition, bucked the trend and generated a positive return over the quarter. High inflation has predominantly been the cause of the weak global market returns, not so much the war in Ukraine. The war has showed no signs of stopping. Recently, we have even seen Ukrainian forces drive back the Russian army in some areas, only to be met with a Russian escalation of more troops and the annexation of four Ukrainian regions. So it certainly feels far from a resolution there. And while this war hasn't been driving global share or bond market returns, it continues to put pressure on commodity prices, such as energy and food, which we've all likely felt at the petrol station and the supermarket. It is one of the reasons global inflation remains significantly elevated, as a lot of countries, like New Zealand, have to import these essential commodities at higher prices. And this led to inflation at a time when inflation was already high. This has been particularly bad for Europe, where inflation has hit a new high for the 11th consecutive month, above 20% in some countries. The US isn't too far behind, with annual inflation up 8.3% with President Biden recently announcing the Inflation Reduction Act. In New Zealand, we are also not too far behind. Annual inflation is up 7.3%, which is a 32-year high. There has been a lot of discussion lately regarding the likelihood of a soft versus hard landing. What are the key issues that are likely to determine which way economies may head? And what do each of these scenarios mean for New Zealand investors? You may have seen in the media recently that the central banks around the world, including the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, are raising interest rates in order to slow the economy to bring inflation under control. The problem is, the impacts of higher interest rates can take a while to take effect. A soft landing is when the central banks are trying to look to bring inflation under control without causing a severe downturn in the economy. And getting the balance right is often referred to as walking on a tightrope. If the central banks raise interest rates too much, it could push the economy into a more significant slowdown, and that's what we mean by a hard landing. This is likely to be detrimental for shares and bonds. Our view is that a soft landing is still possible, and if so, investment markets are more likely to stage a recovery. The current pressures that would normally lead to a hard landing are being offset by consumers and businesses remaining in good financial shape. This has been more recently helped by energy investment packages, which have been introduced across developed countries, such as the United Kingdom, along with other European countries, which include Denmark, Bulgaria, Germany and Italy, where they have announced a household and business energy subsidy. As we are coming to the end of 2022, can we expect to see more of the same in the markets? We certainly expect markets to remain volatile. Due to a number of uncertainties and significant risks which remain, we are keeping a close eye on inflation and interest rates in particular, which could result in a wide range of scenarios, as well as uh, impacts of any further geopolitical risks and the economic developments in the UK, which many have begun to describe as a fiscal car crash. In this volatile environment, Having a strategy which is diversified across a range of asset classes, such as property and infrastructure, and into asset classes which can offer some protection against inflation has never been more important. But for now, the most important thing to do is to choose the most appropriate investment strategy which suits your financial objectives and personal circumstances.